Hey there, today is a bit of a different video. No screen sharing or tutorials. We're gonna talk about railway. What is it? What's good and bad? How much does it cost? And what are some of the use cases? So let's get into it. In the simplest terms, a railway is a place to host your stuff. You can host services or cron jobs. Services can be anything like a WordPress blog, a e-commerce website, a Discord bot, anything that requires server processing. Cron jobs, on the other hand, uh, are just jobs that run on a timer. So anything you need to get done every 10 minutes, 15 minutes, one hour, once a week, you can run that on railway as well. To deploy these services and cron jobs, you don't really even need to write a Docker file because Railway has its own Nix packs and uh, you can actually grab them off of their marketplace. Kind of like you have your Docker hub where you can get uh, pre-configured Docker images. You can do the same with the marketplace. But the marketplace also has additional perks such as deploying an entire architecture, kind of like a pre-made Docker Compose that you can grab from there. So for example, you could get an Nginx server, a Redis client, and a database all in one. Now, when I say marketplace, it, they're mostly free. You don't have to pay for them. But people who do create templates, and if you use them, you do get a bit of a kickback if you're the creator. So that's kind of neat. There are, however, a couple, I would say, restrictions to what you can run. So the first restriction is no LLMs, right? So you, there's no GPU compute, so you won't be able to run Llama 3 or anything like that uh, on railway. And then second, uh, any government or banking related apps, probably not going to happen because they don't have any certification for these verticals. Uh, there's just, the company's a little young, so they're just not there yet. And we'll, we'll touch on this a little bit later in the video, but government and banking and LLMs, this is not the place. All right, so now that you know what railway is, let's talk about some of the good things about railway. And we'll touch on the bad afterward. The main selling point of Railway is the simplicity of deployment and hosting and configuration. It's all there, there's a nice UI, it's very easy to set up, and you can bring your own Docker file, and in fact, you should. Uh, they have an excellent visual designer, so you can, like with your eyes, see what your architecture looks like. It's not just YAML files or a Helm chart or something you actually see which services connects to which service, where is a cron job or is a database. So very cool to be able to see that on the screen. So Railway is essentially a batteries included hosting platform. Live logs, check. Resource usage, check. Health checks and auto restarts, all there. Also it's it's all fairly cheap, and we'll touch on the cost a little bit later in the video too, but uh, it's, it's very affordable. And they have a free trial. So those are the pros. Uh, what are some of the cons? Well, mm, there are a few. First, they're relatively new as a company, so there's a bit of a risk there. That risk can be alleviated by bringing your own Docker files. And in fact, I would recommend that because you can then take those Docker files and uh, self-host on a VPS. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in seeing. Another drawback is that you can only attach a volume to one service, be it a service or a cron job. So say, for example, you have a service and you have a cron job. The cron job is running every, I don't know, hour. It's doing an ETL of some sort. Uh, it's grabbing data, transforming it, and storing it in a volume, in a CSV, for example. Then you want that service to serve out that CSV via REST. Well, you can't because that service can't access that volume 
because only the crown job can access that volume. So it's kind of a, it's a weird limitation. I hope they fix this, but uh, yeah, that's kind of what, <laughs> that's kind of annoying, I would say. And one last thing about railway, it's not necessarily a drawback, but it's kind of, um, it's a little weird. They advertise their databases like hey you got we got a ui for databases here but in the documentation they say that there's no there's no sla so you you don't get like four nines on your database and there's no automated backup and 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 this is important it uses the same compute as the rest of your services so you have everything, you have a project, and that project has a certain amount of compute, uh, meaning CPU and memory, and the database uses some of that. So if your database uh, has a lot of queries against it, well, the rest of the services are gonna suffer because compute is limited. So those are, those are some of the cons. Uh, there aren't very many. I found uh, railway is pretty cool. I know this kind of sounds, it's not sponsored. <laughs> sounds like an advertisement, but I really do like the platform. So you may be thinking, okay, great. Sign me up. How much does it cost? So here's the thing. They have a free trial. Uh, you get $5 and that's not a limited trial limited in the uh, amount that you get, which is $5, but there's no time limit on it. So you can potentially run a hobby project for several months with incurring very few charges against your $5. But you want to move to a hobby plan probably pretty quickly. There are some limitations with the free plan. Namely, you can't deploy from a GitHub repo unless that repo has uh, a certain number of months or years that it's been around. So if you're just starting out, you have a fresh repo, uh, you're probably not going to be able to use the free plan for anything except their database deployments, which are in-house deployments. So moving to a hobby plan makes sense. How much is a hobby plan? Well, it's, it's $5. So five bucks a month and that five bucks includes usage, but you only pay for active usage. What that what does that mean? Well, basically, if you have a machine running, if you think about a VPS provider, right? I mean, like a digital ocean or something. You have a VM on there. It's five bucks a month or seven bucks a month, and it runs nonstop. And you're just paying that seven dollars a month. Here, you're paying five bucks a month for the hobby plan. But when you run your code on there, it's always available, but you only pay when you're using the compute. That means that if no requests are coming into your API, you're not paying for that. I mean, it's not being charged against your $5 hobby limit. As you're scaling, maybe you have 15 services, three environments, so 45 services, maybe 60 to $80, maybe $100. And if you have a company and you're hosting all your services on railway, well, you don't work on weekends, right? So your development environment, maybe your staging environment aren't being used at all. And you don't pay for that. It doesn't go against your, your five bucks or whatever it is that you're paying. Probably if you have a company, you're not on the hobby plan, but Regardless, you only pay for active compute. Just keep that in mind because that's key. That's like a big differentiating factor from other providers. So whether you're starting a greenfield project or maybe you have a Kubernetes cluster that you want to move off of your own infrastructure or off of the cloud, uh, you want to move it to railway, it's a good choice. Another scenario could be maybe your DevOps guy left and uh, you have nobody to run your infrastructure. Well, with Railway, you straight up don't need a DevOps guy because the, it's just so easy to use. Anybody can use it. Hell, even an engineering manager could use it.
but railway is not always the best choice and we went over some of the limitations at the beginning of the video so i'm just going to reiterate them here any mission critical software that requires uh, four nines i mean uh, in uh, slas is probably not a good idea especially when it comes to the database i would uh, urge you to use a managed database solution here like planet scale or neon or azure sql something like that their databases also don't have automated backups and uh, they share compute with the rest of your services so if you're thinking about hosting like a real series database uh, i would probably not do that on railway that's just my personal opinion now if you're running a hobby project and you don't really care about the data so much or maybe you want to run a database in development environment uh yeah totally like if the data doesn't matter to you that much then it's totally fine to to host it on railway you also don't want to be hosting any llms or any ai related things on here uh belay that when i say ai related i specifically mean models so like llama 3 for example you don't want to host that on here because there's no gpu compute so you're you're just it's not gonna work it's not gonna work well i mean it'll work if you make it cpu bound but it's it's gonna be terrible terrible performance so don't do that no machine learning models no llms on here and uh we touched on this before but basically government or banking uh railway is not certified for a lot of these i do believe they're doing like hipaa certification or something like that some kind of healthcare related certification but uh, other than that, like government or banking, uh, not right now, at least not yet. All right, you've stayed until the end of the video. So I have a bonus section here for you. Here are some example projects that you could host on Railway. Web3 frontends. So anything that uh, deals with the blockchain. You need, you need to host your app somewhere, right? You're not hosting your app on the blockchain you're accessing the blockchain. So any Web3 application could totally be hosted on Railway. Any gaming services. So like a, for example, a game that I play has a lot of external tools. Well, all those tools are hosted somewhere. Railway is a good place for that. Discord bots, you could host those on Railway. Easy peasy. Of course, enterprise or b2b SaaS software uh railway is like a prime candidate for hosting those any e-commerce software like open card magento medusa something like that you could host woocommerce uh, you could host that on railway as well uh, blogs both headless and headful with a head like WordPress, right, for example, uh, or Strapi. And we talked uh, a little bit about AI and ML, but you can host a front end for a model, right? So you could host your model somewhere else that has GPU compute, and then you could host the front end for that model. So if you, th if you think about chatgpt.com, where is that hosted, right? Uh, or Leonardo AI or something like that, right? That's hosted somewhere. You could host that also on Railway. And lastly, this one's interesting. I want to try hosting Pocket Base on Railway. It's a backend as a service. Uh, theoretically, you could also try hosting Supabase because they do have an uh, open source version of their service, but you, you could theoretically host a backend as a service also on Railway. So these are just some of the examples uh, of projects. So thanks for uh, watching till the end. Uh, I hope you learned something about Railway. And if you want to give it a try, railway.app. I'll leave the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.